You're going to notice when I'm showing him here, you're going to notice how I'm level. My shoulders are generally level. I'm taking everything out. His orbit is in this position and his weight is shifting. My weight's down so I can move around the block and drive and put pressure against the implement. And you're going to notice that his toes up and everything's shifting. <laughs> everybody, what's going on? It's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we are going to go through a rotational shot put progression with a more advanced high school athlete. Now, this kid is super fast, super quick, right? Like, now I know that's a little redundant, but I mean twitchy. This guy's got pop. He moves really well. And when you watch him throw, he looks really long and he moves. He's got really good movement, but there are some definite technical things holding this kid back and some thought processes. Now, that brings us to the thing. So what we're going to dive in and talk about today is progression, right? How do we look at what's going on? Specifically, with the throwing chain reaction system, the thing that we're always focused on is... Let's let's go through our six pillars and identify what are the issues at each pillar. And in this athlete's case, we are weeks away from some of the biggest meets of the season. He had flown in for a VIP training with one other athlete. We had an athlete, he's from Texas. We had another athlete in from Florida. And it was just these two on a VIP private camp. And what we're looking for always are these fine tuned. What can we adjust at, that is applicable and not going to screw them up right and keep all the things that they're doing well and make those key changes so our first goal is always going to be to run through their six pillars so what do they do so this is what he does and this is what his stand throw looks like so there's some good stuff going on here and there and there's some other stuff that's kind of limiting so here specifically you're going to notice that where the hips are in relation to the feet, right? The key is he needs to get those hips over here. He needs the head would be over here. The hips would be over here. So this same position, he would need to have more load in the leg and be set up so that he could rotate on the axis more effectively. And that's one of the things we've talked about in some of the other videos. And if you've ever looked here on YouTube, you'll see things where we're talking about the power position and the stand throw. And this is a perfect example. So what happens when you train this type of position? He's working on shifting forward. You see how this is coming here. The hips are too far forward to begin with. So it makes it very difficult to work the delivery leg because you're not on top of it and there's no vertical axis, right? We've talked about that. You need to have the vertical axis and he's way in front of it. And that's going to, of course, limit the ability to apply the leg strength to the upper body strength. Remember, even if you have the biggest bench and you've got a massive squat, if you're not in a position to use those squat legs, you know, that squat strength, you're not going to be able to maximize that bench press strength. So as we go through, we looked at that. That was one of the first things. Now, remember, the thing that we're always going to do in any kind of training is always a progression. And a lot of times people come to that. If you come to a camp, we teach a progression the whole day. It's like a ton of info. And here we kind of go through it quickly. This is what he did. Now what we want to do is kind of help him understand what he should be doing, where the hips would be moving. And you're going to notice as I kind of demo, this is something in our system we call a squatted throw. We've posted this on various things. And we're trying to maintain that axis so everything's going to rotate around. And so that is going to be, uh, you know, we're trying to show them how to come through proper shoulders, like level hips, level shoulders, right? So we're trying to show that that the we want to maintain the right radius and orbit of the shoulders and hips and how we're going to be able to come through and where the block arm is going to set and how we're going to create extension into the throw. Now, as we go here, um, we move on to what we call as our half turn modified wheel. And then we move into something we call a walk around throw a walk around throw is designed to teach how to feel the tension by creating the right wrap that's very different in the shot than it is in the discus and you're going to notice when i'm showing him here you're going to notice how i'm level my shoulders are generally level i'm taking everything out his orbit is in this position and his weight is shifting my weight's down so i can move around the block and drive and put pressure against the implement and you're going to notice that his toes up and everything's shifting. That's going to cause him an issue. So th these are like little subtleties. So again, the point of the walk around is to teach how to move into that power position and move. And it 
teaches you how to feel that tension. So now next we're going to do what we call as a hinge hinge step throw. Again, really great for beginners and even for more advanced athletes. If you look carefully on social media, you're going to see advanced athletes doing this all the time. And so now by the time we get to the full throw, now we're, we're addressing all the pillars. We're going from pillar six to pillar one, and we're being able to identify what are all the issues and movement pieces. That's what our system does. So now we have drills in every pillar that are going to be specific to him. There's, there's going to be 10, you know, we'll keep it simple. There's basically 12 drills for every pillar and are you going to do 12 drills on everything and 70 plus drills no absolutely not what you're going to do is find the most specific formula to the athlete so here was the thing as we went to the full throw the athlete couldn't you know he wasn't super aware of some of the things he was doing he kind of see he said he didn't watch a lot of film and he didn't watch a lot of film of advanced athletes and i think that's one of the beauties of today with social media and youtube and those sorts of things there's all kinds of stuff now i want you to look carefully watch him throw and so this is what he was doing right you see how he's kind of getting cut off you see how he overreaches and here was the most important thing if you look down at the ground what i had to do is kind of show him where his path was and so his upper body you're going to notice was this is his shoulder path and where he's moving across the ring and what i was trying to show him is how it needs to move right and that's a big deal so what we did is you see this there there we go and you see how everything's running here he's landing closed and again the kid's got a lot of pop and he could hit it but this is what he was experiencing in competition you know hitting some good throws a pr of like right around 57 feet i think 56 11 and um you know super quick so watch i'll just play it and you can kind of watch and the kids got tons and tons of pop and so the next day what we had to do is we wanted to start over we got his brain we figured out what he's doing talk about different things and you know of course logically there's some you know me as the coach figuring it out and having him understand hey this is what you're doing and this is what you would want to do so now this is a simple drill we call a a, a punch or a preloaded throw and what we try to do is just this is a preloaded throw and what we're trying to do is just teach him how to engage the legs and we're going to keep moving through so now what we were trying to do is show him again how everything's kind of short and how we're going to lengthen that out so this the first one was him the second one was what i would like him to do and again looking over here you're going to see that we have that shoulder path let me do this real quick so you see that so he was on this path and we're trying to get on that path right and that was really key so now here's what i really liked as he went through what we started to do is kind of make a couple of key adjustments and we were starting to find better balance points now remember he comes in with a you know 57 foot pr and he popped a 60 he he hit multiple throws over that and he hit a, you know a 60 footer in the training session now you're going to notice like just the adjustments we made okay really pretty simple so look at how we were changing that path so we made a couple of key adjustments and you can see how he's still landing a little bit you know closed but you can see how he was squaring up more effectively and staying a little bit more on balance and and this was uh, right about 60 feet. So some really good things and really good adjustments. Now, what's the point of today as I try to go through this and try to keep this not too long, but progression is key. What you're focusing on is key. And there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. What do you do well? Because most people are doing things well. Even if you don't know what you're doing, there's going to be some good right then there's the the bad and there's like so these are things that you're doing like if you looked at this athlete's stand throw in the beginning he was not moving um exceptionally well okay um and it's not benefiting him and then there's the ugly when you look at that and i don't mean to like i'm not being critical but he's really off balance and there was things we were looking at with we looking at the orbit and the and the radius right long arm level shoulders and hips that's where things were really off but this kid is like super fast and you can see how again he would go in and he's got really great feel and you know this kid can connect so once his technique comes together this, this is going to be really exciting for this guy so the idea here is we were able to make some key changes now there's added information here so we have something coming forth where we're going to be diving into this if you're a member or this will be available where we will go in depth for like 
30 plus minutes where we're going to talk about everything we did inside the throwing chain reaction, what drills, what progressions, all the specifics, and then the added detail that it's really tough to do here. So if you want more information about that, be sure to click the link below, visit our website for more info on the TCR system coaching and all that available stuff. So what's the big point here that we're trying to get across is that to help you guys realize is that progression is a, a huge part of it. This is nothing that we've trying to say we've come up with. Progression is as old as throwing. And so basically that's the process of putting together the pieces and building to a full throw. Now the thing that we do inside the throwing chain reaction, of course, is that we are doing that in a very specific way. We want very specific mechanics and we show you step by step how each of these things are supposed to work. And then we have corresponding drills to train the positions and we have our throwing progressions like this. The throwing progressions are meant to set it up and react. We always talk about when you throw, you don't wanna think, you wanna feel. And when you train and drill, you want to think about positions and then when it's time to throw it's time to react and that's why you have to drill and learn to create patterns and positions get trained so that when you put them into the throw they become reactions so that's the whole point of today's video um, here you can see again how we went through various progressions we went through um, we showed him a stand throw. We went to what we call was a squatted throw, which is a shortened range of motion to kind of put it up. This is called a punch. And then we went through a preloaded throw, a walk around, a hinge hinge step throw, and then onto the full throw. And when we do that, we can see what the thrower needs. Then we can assess exactly what they did. And here we were able to take this athlete from who has a competition PR of 57, and I'm sure he's thrown further in practice before, but he came in and he hit 60 feet in training, which was, from what I understand, the first time he had done that. And we just did a couple of key adjustments at this point because there was things he would be able to do or would not be able to do because of the time of the season. So it becomes more critical to find those little details that are gonna make big impact fast. Okay guys, so that's the whole goal today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you would like to see more on this type of stuff, be sure to comment below, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, check out the Throwing Chain Reaction System, and we will see you on the next video.